Welcome back to the show, The Thrifty Upcycler. I'm so glad that you tuned in today. We have a fabulous show for you today. I am really excited about it. So we have a few things that we're going to be doing today. First, we have a very special guest coming on. His name is Brian Frankfurth. He is from Ottawa, Detroit Trading Post, and he's going to be showing you how he restores old photos into beautiful historical pieces that you can keep in your home forever. I'm also going to be teaching you how to create your very own barn barn board effect using paint um, and that's definitely going to be a really fun DIY and today we're going to be talking all about how to add character into your home so many of us uh, when you move into new homes a lot of times there's not a whole lot of character going on so there's a few really great tips that I'm going to show you today on how you can get some really beautiful texture into your home um, lots of character and how you can really transform your space and give it a uh, much more visual impact. So a couple of things. So first of all, the five tips, the very first is uh, how to add, adding color into your home. So there's a few ways that you can look at doing that. You can do it by uh, painting a focal wall in a really uh, fun color. Another way that I really love is just by doing it with furniture. So this piece here, for example, it's a really fun bright blue but it's also a blue that's not really going to take over your space but that does really add a lot of character the next photo we have coming up this is another gorgeous green greens are always on trend they're always here and painting a little a little piece of furniture in a really bright fun color is a really great way just to add a little bit more texture into your home so my next tip is making sure that you have pieces that are not only functional, but also add a bit of a design element to it and uh, also have a little bit of texture. So a couple of, I have a couple of photos of some things that will work. Now this is something that we actually made and uh, this has been made out of pallet woods. And I done a few, I've done a few different techniques just to give it a little bit more character, but this is functional because it's a coat rack, but it's also a piece of art and it adds quite a lot of texture into your space. The next one that we have coming up is also another coat rack and you can see even though it is more of a neutral tone because of the different textures, the different colors, the different depths, it's definitely adding a lot of space and this would also work if you have a little bit more of a contemporary look in your space. The next one here, this is something that we also made as well, and I really love uh, the look and the feel of this. It's very aged, it's very uh, worn, and it's bringing a lot of warmth and character into a space. So this is another fantastic piece where you can combine functionality, where you've got, you're able to hold your wines, or if you have a towel rack, this is a really great way to be able to do that and still add some texture into your piece. The, the next thing is being able to add um, some character by just adding some textures. And when I say textures, I don't mean that you have to run out and get um, really busy, uh, really busy colorful texture, but just by adding some throws like this. And you can see, even though this is in a neutral color, um, it still adds a lot of texture into your space. And having something like this, this throw just gently thrown over your couch or your chair is really gonna add a level of warmth and comfortability to your space. This I found, and I'm in love with this. So this piece here, it's an actual towel, but I think you could also use this quite nicely as a throw. But it has a little bit of metallic, it has lots of texture on it, the fringe is fantastic, but this is another way that you can add just a little bit of texture into your space. So um, the next thing is being able to uh, bring in some art. Our art pieces are a really great way to be able to give a real punch, a real um, visual impact. So I have a couple of pictures right here of, and these are just some some really easy ways that uh, that you can just add a little bit more of a of a visual punch to your space. I also have a couple of pictures that I've uh, taken and uh, they should be popping up any second now of some artwork. So you can go out and you can get your own artwork, you can buy some, um, but uh, there's a lot of really cool spaces in Ottawa. This is actually uh, a spot that we took, I think it's actually in Montreal where we took a picture and it's gorgeous, but this would be a really beautiful way to add a lot of color and, and character into your space. The next one, um, these are pictures that I actually made. So um, this is, uh, I took an art class, this is through uh, in 
caustic art. I took this art class and I created my own um, art and uh, now it's hanging up in my space. But these are some really easy ways that you can easily incorporate um, some elements to really warm up your space. So I have one picture coming up as well um, from a living room from a designer that I am, um, I, I love her work, um, Amanda Aaron Designs. So this is a space and you can see a lot of the concepts that we talked about, you can see here. You can see the gorgeous texture from the blankets hanging from the chairs. You can see the wainscoting. You can see the artwork. There's punches of color. So all of these things really warm up the space and add a lot of character and it doesn't take over. So those are some really easy ways that you can be able to incorporate some of that into your space. So let's talk about something that I love doing uh, and that is doing some DIYs. So, you don't have to be an artist to be able to create your own art. There's lots of things out there that make it very easy for you to do. And I'm gonna show you some today. So what I've done is I just found this, this cool little board at, um, I think I actually got it from a dollar store. I painted, in, uh, painted it in Fusion Casement, which is a really nice, beautiful white. And I got these guys, these are called transfers. So they're sticky and they adhere to pretty much most surfaces. I cut out the parts that I want, and now I'm gonna rub it onto my actual canvas. So this is a really fun way, and like again, I said, you don't have to be an artist. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick it on. I took off the wax, waxy coating, and I'm just gonna rub it on. And then I find the best way to do it is actually using this paintbrush right here. So all I'm gonna do is a technique called burnishing. And I'm just gonna gently give this a rub and what's gonna happen is the picture is gonna end up adhering onto my painted surface. And you can kinda see how I'm doing it and how it's adhering. And right now, botanicals, um, botanicals are so in and I don't think, regardless of what your decor style is, these can easily be thrown into any room and it looks like a custom piece of art that you've had made. So I'm almost got it all on and it's going to be gorgeous. So I probably still have to do a little bit more rubbing with this guy, but you can kind of see how it's adhering. And I'm just going to show you a quick pick. So this is one that I did just before. So this guy right here, gorgeous. You can hang this up put it in your bathroom, put it in your kitchen, and it's gonna look amazing. So, thanks so much. You can do definitely do your own artwork. Next up, we have a really fun DIY. Stay tuned. So today I'm going to be showing you how to create your own barn board, barn board effect. Now, barn board can be really expensive and I think it works so wonderfully in most design styles. It really adds a warmth and a real organic feel to it, but unless you have a barn in your backyard, it can get really expensive to get some barn board. So I've come up with a really fun technique on how to be able to create your own barn board effect using paint. So for this project, I'm going to be showing you with fusion mineral paint on how you can create that look. So first step, if you happen to notice here, you can take a look. So this piece here, this wood, we made a little box here out of pallet wood. So it already has lots of really gorgeous texture. You can see some of these little nail holes in here and you can already see a little bit of a, a texturing, um, coloring uh, thing happening going on uh, with, with this. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to add a little bit of paint to it and really bring it out. Now, you don't necessarily have to use uh, pallet wood, but you can just use like a regular board and if you have a hammer, you can bang, bang it up a little bit to create a little bit of texture with it or you can add some nails into it and then pull them out. So anything um, that's gonna just give it a real rough um, texture, you can use that. So first of all, what you need when you are looking at doing um, a barn board effect is you, you need to have some paints. So typically what I like to do is I usually like to have about three tones. So I'll start with a dark tone like this. 
I'm going to stick with all the grays because I'm really into that whole driftwood effect right now. So I'm going to start with this color ash, which is a really dark charcoal gray. And then I'm going to have my mid-tone gray, which is called Little Lamb. I'm going to use this little guy here. And then I'm just going to layer in a little bit of this really pretty pebble color. So this is a really soft, really light gray. But by adding those colors in, it's really going to give it some depth and some texture to it. So we've got that happening. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my brush into the paint. So because I really want to stain the wood first, what I'm going to do is I have a little container here full of water and I'm just going to dip my brush into it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently start painting it. Now the great thing about this, this is like working on a canvas. There's not really anything that you could do that could really muck this up. So I'm just going to add a little bit more water to it because I just want to thin it out a little bit more. And essentially all you're going to be doing is just layering on different colors. It doesn't have to be perfect because if you remember barn board is not perfect and that's the beauty of it. I'm just going to add a little bit more water to it just to kind of thin it out. And you can see how I'm staining the wood. It's changing the color of the wood. So you can even do this with pine. You can do it with um, ash. You can do this with any kind of wood to really create that look. So once I've stained it, what I do as I take my shop rags, and guys, shop rags are your best friend when it comes to refinishing or painting. I fold it up into all four so I can save it. And this is my little container of water. And I'm just going to dampen this a little bit. So let's say I feel like I've put a little bit too much on. I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to give it a bit of a wipe off. And now it'll just spread out the paint a little bit more. So you can kind of see that texture. See all that coming through? It's gorgeous. So this is my starting layer. I always like to start with the dark first and then layer on the colors as I go on. So I've done that. The fun thing about this is you can't really go wrong. So I'm going to dip my brush into this mid-tone gray here from Fusion. And I'm going to do the same thing all over again. Your brush strokes don't have to be perfect, as you can see. But by doing this, I'm just adding a lot of like really gorgeous highlights into this and just lighten things up a little bit. So it's falling into all these really gorgeous nail holes and I'm just gonna keep layering it on. So I'm gonna go back to my damp cloth and I'm just gonna wipe it back. Now you can see it's already starting to change. You can already see that, look at that. It's already starting to change the color of the wood. Now I think I'm going to add the really light gray here. So I'm going to dip my brush in some water again and just keep wiping it on. So really this is all about just creating lots of really gorgeous layers. I've chosen to do grays. You don't have to. You can even mix some of the colors if you want to. Um, or you can even use a selection of browns. But for me, whenever I'm creating, this is, to me, this is one of the funnest things to be able to do, is you can just keep playing with it and you can just keep layering it. So what I'm gonna do to have a little bit of fun is I'm gonna use a little bit of this white here just to kinda lighten things up a little bit. And again, you don't have to put it everywhere. You can just put it on just a few of the spots here. Just let it sink into the wood. And because I'm using Fusion, it has a built-in top coat, so I don't have to put anything over top of it. But I'm going to show you a little trick after. So do you see all these little holes here? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to keep it in here. So I'm going to go back to my damp rag, and I'm just going to gently pull it back and keep some in. Now, part of the key of doing this is you don't want to put so much pressure because you can end up going all the way back down to the wood, which you don't want. But even if that happens, that's okay. It can really easily be fixed. But it's just about layering and playing. And this is another time where I think that you should have a little bit of fun when you're doing this. If you're into having a glass of wine, do it. If you like having little treats while you paint, do it. But this is fun and it's enjoyable. And remember, you can always go back to some of the darker colors that you use and just layer it a little bit on and keep playing and playing with it. So 
once you've done that, and once you get it to a place where you're really happy with, you can just leave it and let it dry. And once it's dry, then you can start playing a little bit with some waxes. So, like I mentioned, Fusion does have a built-in top coat. So if you just wanted to leave it like this once it dries, you can do that. That's totally fine. But if you want to even add a little bit more depth to it and give it an even more character, and you want to have some lovely detail stick in it, then what you can look at doing is you can look at, I'm just going to use these here. I'm going to show you guys a little trick too while I'm doing this. So if you ever have one side drying and you don't want to wreck it, wreck your table, you can just pop it up like that. So you can see here, I have got, I have a transfer on it too. So I was starting to do this box for today. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to use some of these waxes. Now, sometimes I'll even just use my finger. You don't always have to use a rag. So I'm just going to use a little bit of my finger and I'm going to push it into all the points just like this and just add a little bit more character to it. So I'm gonna keep working on this, uh, really easy to do. Next up we have uh, Brian Frankfurt here talking about how he restores old photos and creates history. Stay tuned, it's gonna be great. Welcome back. So we've been talking all day about how to add character and visual interest into your space. And we have Brian Frankfurt here from Ottawa Detroit Trading Post, who is the perfect person to be able to bring in today to talk about how to restore, how he restores photography and uh, how you can bring it into your home. So thanks so much for being here today. Thank you. I'm glad yeah. to be here. Yeah, awesome. So um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your business? Uh, yeah, so I've always been a big fan of history. I loved history since like grade school. Uh, but uh, it wasn't until the last few years where really, I really like found a way to like apply it in something I enjoy. I enjoy uh, working with uh, images as well. So I've uh, gone to the archives and looked on various archives uh, like on the web and found some uh, really interesting images. And uh, what I do is I clean them up, fix like if it's photos, fix the scratches and the uh, any uh, imperfections in it. And if it's maps or uh, other like uh, paper things, I, I'll fix the rips and tears and then uh, print them out nice and big so that oh. you can uh, see them. Well, fantastic. You brought some really gorgeous pictures in today and um, I want people to see them because I've been a fan of your work for quite some time and I think they're really awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about this one here in particular? Yeah, so this is uh, the, the first parliament before it burned down. It was about 1900. Oh my goodness. So this is a uh, uh, image of parliament. And um, yeah, like I said, I, I fixed the rips and tears in it. It was like you know, badly cropped, so you know I formatted it nice. Yeah. And then uh, to go along with this one, uh, I also uh, did a colorization and of it. And this is it right here, yeah, right? right? Okay, let's it. put this up so everybody can see. So yeah, there's that. Here's the before and after. You can see. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so. Uh, Wow. Yeah, that was that is amazing. That was a really fun endeavor. So that is I, yeah, along with uh, restoring, I'll do some colorizations every now and then. Oh, yeah. that's fantastic. Can I ask, so how long does this does this typically does this process take you? It's hard to say because I like it is a hobby it's that a I was doing. So yeah. yeah, I do it like, you know, I come home after work and I'll you know, I'll spend a couple hours doing it and like, you know, maybe a week or two I'll have one done or another one done. Oh, well, they're gorgeous. Uh, and I think this is such a really fantastic way to have a little bit of history in yeah. your home. And, and like a great talking point, too, to be able to say that this was, you know, the, the, the parliament before it burned down, I think is uh, it's pretty fantastic. Yeah. Now, you brought another one in here, too, today. Can we yeah. take a look at that? So guy? I'm a sports fan. I grew up, I call it Ottawa, Detroit, because I grew up uh, right across from Detroit near uh, Windsor. Oh, okay. So here's an image of a baseball player from like the 1920s. He's uh, selling a car just like the, the sports uh, the celebrities do oh my now. Goodness. So, but uh, this one I colorized. It was a, a black and white image of him with a uh, Lincoln, and uh, it's Harry Heimlin, a baseball player for Detroit. So, oh my goodness! I, uh, yeah, restored it and then colorized it. So this is one I've done. I'm I'm working on one uh, 
in Tiger Stadium, but it's still a work in progress. Yeah, well, <laughs> I can imagine it does take a qu quite a bit of time to do it, but uh, yeah, I love the. Uh, it just makes it so much more realistic, I think, too, when you can. Yeah, and yeah. It, you know, it really brings it to life. <laughs> so you have a few other ones here too. Yeah, um, so these are the smaller sizes okay. that I offer. I, I like to print them as big as possible, so yeah. this is small. Maybe you could talk to us a little bit too about about what you offer to people. So we yeah. see you you have these. These are for sale. Yeah, yeah. These uh, I offer them all in various sizes small medium and large as okay. you'll see uh, but if a person has an image that they they want restored uh, they can get in touch with me through the website and uh, let me know what they have if they either want me to like take it and scan it for them myself I can uh, offer that or if they they're able to get a good scan of it or a photo even uh, I can you know work with see what I can work yeah. with and, so even so even if people have like really older photos of maybe um, a family or, or you know things that are really important to them yeah it's yeah. not it's not done it's not finished these are things that, that that can be fixed up and they can be restored oh yeah absolutely and yeah like if you have a family photo like you don't have to print it as big but yeah. I can you know uh, work on it and get it to look uh, all right and then you can you know print it yourself oh fantastic print it for you okay let's take a look at some <laughs> other pictures which one should we pull oh this one is awesome start this yeah, one. Let's yeah this, this one. is uh, so this is a photo of Montreal from uh, from Mount Royal from 1910 you see there's the Victoria Bridge and uh, it was actually this one was actually colorized back in 1910 where they would hand color like the negative right oh my goodness so so I didn't colorize this one myself it was actually already done but I again I cleaned up I, like any there was scratches on it and dust uh, so and then printed it up here wow so that's yeah Montreal and I also have other uh, versions on my website and here's uh, a bird's eye view of Detroit, uh, again from 1900. And uh, this, one other thing that I do is like, you see that it's kind of green. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I offer it on my website in a nicer shade of blue. It's a little more contemporary, like this is, might not be what somebody would choose if they were printing it this time. But I mean, if people want to get in touch with me and like, you know, I'd like it actually to be another shade. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to work with them. Yeah. And get them well, get it's it fantastic because it sounds you can pretty much um, this this would work with most decor styles too, and yeah. you can change up the color a little bit too to offer something else. And that's yeah, kind of my philosophy. It's like you know, it's doing no good sitting in an archive. Yeah wasting away. And it should like, be shared, yeah. Yeah, and people should enjoy it the way they want to enjoy it, you know. All right, I'll grab this. Um, uh, you want to group, yeah, let's bring up this this one here, because so this, this one is, is Yeah, the big pretty. one, this is my uh, pride and joy. This is what got me started in wow. this uh, effort. So this is Ottawa itself from 1895, a bird's eye view. And uh, when, I, when I found it, I have actually found it on the U.S. archives, and it was split in half. There was tears on the side, a lot more faded. So, you know, the big thing was the split and the seam in the middle and uh, fixed all of it and then brightened it up. And then, yeah, and again, like if people want it to be a different shade or what they want customized, yeah. I, I'm happy to work with them. And on this picture, so we see there's quite a few old businesses that aren't necessarily around <laughs> anymore. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's funny. I, I don't know too many. There's two photographers in the bottom. Pit away in the Jarvis. Okay. And then I, I did a search and I found in the 20s there was a photography studio called Pit away and Jarvis. So oh they must goodness. have merged. And the only other one I recognize is the brewery Carling. Yes. <laughs> So uh, wow. yeah, no, it's pretty. Uh, so this pretty is amazing. yeah, this is a pretty fantastic, and even because it's 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 such on a it's on such a large scale, you can really get a good idea of some of the like you can see the street names. Exactly. Um, you can see the canal, and you can really see how things have really evolved. And so, yeah, so. yeah, like you see where the uh, art center is. There was actually it was a functioning canal, so yeah. boats would turn around there, and all. But all the street names are, are remarkably similar. There's yeah. a few that are different, which are interesting to see. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like like you were saying, like you really want to see it nice and big. Uh, I do have it in smaller, the smaller size, but I also crop it so that you get to still see the detail. Oh, that's awesome! Thanks yeah. so much for coming in today. We have about thirty seconds left, and uh, please let us know where, where if, if anyone is interested in contacting you about getting some of these prints, how they can how they can get a hold of you. Yeah, so the easiest thing is my website, ottawadetroit.com, all one word, Ottawa, Detroit. Uh, so yeah, you can send me an email, you can uh, call me if you have a question, uh, I'm happy to help. Perfect, thanks so much. Thanks so much for tuning in today, guys. We had a great show. See you soon. <laughs>